welcome, welcome to Himalayas. And uh, it's good that uh, everybody except one managed to get here today. Thanks to the these daredevil helicopter pilots and uh, getting all of you here in this weather in this kind of overcast skies in this mountainous terrain is uh, they did it quite effortlessly but it's not easy so thanks to them all of us are here in one group and uh, we are already at uh, nearly 11,400, 11, nearly 11,500 feet. So from here on, a little bit of care would be good because uh, once you get these altitude troubles, they're not pleasant. We'll make sure you live, but we can't prevent a headache. We don't travel all this way just to have a picnic. We come all this way because we want to imbibe something else. So this trek is a, a good preparation before we go to Kailash. Something of Kailash should stay with you. All of you found your tents? Great! Living in a tent has been uh, a great adventure. I, I think uh, I can't recollect the last time I slept in a tent, uh, which was long, long ago. And uh, But it was really fun. Put simply, I had the best sleep last night. The next few days we are here till you finish Kailash and go back to wherever you have to go back. You must just imbibe, just breathe, breathe the mountains. It's a profound experience. Today is the first day, so it's really good. Uh, we just uh, crossed Manang Valley. Looking forward to how this keeps building on from here on. We stopped near some villages at the far end and he was giving out some biscuits and treats and just looking at his love for, for everyone just was just really nice and walking um, the journey with him has been very good. It was the yeah, uh, it was the <laughs> it was the steepest bit, uh, but it was fine. Probably told on a lot of people. <laughs> we all slowed down a little. Bit. Pretty sure we'll see a bit more of that going forward. I don't know. I have no expectations. I'm just open. I want to see what's going to happen. I'm excited though. going on a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is not really a journey, it is an inward journey. An inward journey is a, a farcical term because there is no distance. The distance is just this, that instead of looking this way, you made a hundred and eighty degree turn inward. That's all the journey, there's no place to walk, huh? There isn't any distance, it's an imagined distance, that's all. So if you turn around, it's right there. 
But to make that simple turn around, people take lifetimes, make the best out of it and come. In terms of altitude, today is not a very big challenge. Uh, we are just climbing about maybe 360, 370 meters. Where we camp should be a shade over 4,100 meters. Five minutes, five minutes. In five minutes, everybody ready. Only thing is, uh, <laughs> the first two and a half kilometers is a straight climb. So you will have to carry your breakfast. Every year I wonder like how can I walk all this, you know, like I can't be able to walk in treadmill for more than 30 minutes, but you know, like here, mountain, it just happens. Probably, you know, like it's not me, it's because of my master. So. Tell me within you, is it your emotion or your thought or the life that you are, which is most valuable right now. There is a difference between what you are and what you have gathered. Things that you gathered from outside, which never was you, never will be you, but right now you believe it is you. If you want to walk up the mountain, the lighter your baggage is, the better, isn't it? <laughs> walk light, because air is thin. I hope the Nepal cell doesn't work, but I have work to do. I've been scared of heights, but uh, in this entire trek, and especially with those uh, in those precarious situations where you know we were crossing those landslide-prone areas, it's a straight uh, downhill slide into the river. I didn't feel scared one bit. Can you hear me? Because you did not want to climb, we got you some really nice down slope. It was quite steep, uh, slippery, uh, dangerous, but uh, we, we were one by one, the Sherpas were there, Satguru's grace, everything. We went one by one slowly and uh, made it. <laughs> in the mountains, that means uh, we are about 4,000 meters closer to heaven, you know. Whether you are right now feeling it or not, it's not just about the oxygen, it's the pressure. When physiology loses its grip on you, this is a good time. This is a good time to become conscious. Consciousness means that which is devoid of memory. Body means 
it is made because of memory. Mind, totally memory. If you take away your memory, you lost your mind, isn't it? So, in whichever way possible for you, you try to keep whatever con that connects you to your memory, just keep it aside for a few days. This is the time, good time to do that. Going into the third day of trekking to Lake Tilichoka, obviously Sadhguru did warn us that it was going to be, going to be quite a steep uh, trek. From the base camp, we are going almost 950 meters, a little shy of a kilometer, and it's a straight uh, trek up. So obviously your thighs and they're being used quite a bit, and you get short breath. When we passed about 4,500 meters, I could feel that, you know, your breath is slowing down and the weight feels much more heavier. There were moments when I would stop to catch my breath and I would look around and I would think it's, it's so beautiful. Once we got to Lake Tilichoka, it's a very beautiful lake, very pristine, very untouched. And you obviously have the Mount Tilichoko, which is nearly 7,000 meters at the background. So it's a very pristine site to be at. At one point you break yourself and some thoughts that are running in your mind, they stop coming, like, you know. You're totally with your body and the surrounding. There's nothing else. You're not thinking about anything else. You're just focused on one thing because it's so physical intensive, but so beautiful because you can also, you're one pointed in, in that sense, I would say. That was my experience though. If you take charge of your physical body, 15 to 20 percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you take charge of your mind, 50 to 60 percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you take charge of the very life energies within you, 100 percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. The question is only how much have you taken charge? The soil that you walk upon and the delicate flower that you see are not different. Just that life blossoms, that's all. So if life blossoms truly within you, one hundred percent of your life is in your hands. But if grace blossoms within you, you yourself become God. You are not looking up to anything else because grace has blossomed within you. You have become that, what you are aspiring for. It is an uh, experience of a lifetime. I never experienced something like this. It's, it's difficult to articulate. You know, if anything I could have asked for in this life, 
I've got it and uh, I think this journey uh, pretty much describes that. It's not worthwhile trying a helicopter in this weather. <laughs> <laughs> See, all my stories are in my turban, but I don't have it today, so… <laughs> it's been four days, uh, but I haven't even had… Um, I mean, I haven't thought about the fact that I haven't had a bath. Well, to be fair, I don't miss it that much. <laughs> Break. What time is dinner? I don't feel like it at all. Oh my god. That's on me. right now on the proper Tibetan plateau. This is the largest plateau on the planet and uh, we are about three and a half hours away from Manasarovar. Make sure you drink a lot of water as we go towards 14,000 feet. Normally altitude problems only happen beyond 13,500. Once even a mild headache picks up, then uh, We'll have to roll you back to the military hospital which is close by or further down the altitude. So please make sure you're healthy and well. Manasarovar is not just another body of water. So don't get to the water, okay? It's not a beach, it looks like that but I want you to experience it in a certain way. We will touch the water, uh, we will get in contact with the water in a specific way. Right from here, if you can start, it's fine, but the last one hour at least, I want all of you in a chant, okay? You know the tune? Shiva Shambhu Shambhu Shiva Shambhu Shambhu Shiva Shambhu Shambhu Shiva Shambhu So, Shiva Shambhu, I'll be with you. Let's see.
It's the most beautiful place I have ever been to. I've traveled a lot. I've never been to a place as serene and magical and captivating as this place. Every hour the color is changing, sometimes it's purple, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's blue. So it's, um, yeah, it's very mesmerizing. When I was much younger, something like Manas Rover would have been an irritant in my life. <laughs> because uh, I could not leave anything unfigured out in my life. But now I've sort of come to terms, some things you, you don't figure and that's about it. <laughs> Many things in the world are referred to as mysteries. That is in the context of whatever you cannot understand is mysterious to you. Every understanding is a misunderstanding because life can never be understood. It can be lived, it can be experienced, you can reverberate with it, you never ever will understand it. Understanding means you have found a meaning. Meaning is essentially a psychological requirement. Existentially, there is no meaning anywhere. What is the meaning of these pebbles? What is the meaning of the lake? What is the meaning of the mountain? What is the meaning of the vastness of the sky? Tell the ducks about the meaning that you found in Manasarovar. They'll quack, quack, quack. <laughs> so, at least the next few days, Manasar over Kailash, don't assume anything. Oh, Shiva is God Mahadeva. You don't know who the hell he is, let's see. Huh? The only thing that matters now is, uh, the life that you are, is it full on or not? That's all. That's all you have to do. Tomorrow the lake will do that to you.
For me, it's uh, it's it's not something I experience from day to day. Obviously, it shocked me. If fro I was frozen to to the extreme, um, in a way, it's it's kind of awakening. I just went in and I went right deep in. It felt so warm inside. I was cold, I know I was cold, but it just felt warm. I, I don't know how to explain that. Normally it takes me time to get overwhelmed too much, but today in the morning when Sadhguru was there, it was quite overwhelming. I was uh, probably I probably only cried in five times in my life and today was one of those days. So, yeah. <laughs> How, how my guru touched me within, how, how he made me feel, nobody else has. And he showed me what I'm not. And that's why I'm here. I'm here for, for one and one person only. And I'm here just for Sadhguru. You know, it's, it touches you somewhere very deep. And I don't think you can ever remain the same after going through this experience. I think that anyone who's been able to experience this is blessed. And I would wish this for everyone I love. I'm blessed that I lived during a time when he was on this earth. That's all I can say, I'm so lucky. In the yogic culture, Shiva is seen as the source of mysticism. What this means is that without him, we wouldn't even have realized there are mysteries. It's because of him that at least some pieces fell into our understanding or wonderment. At least we could begin to wonder about it, because otherwise it wouldn't even be there. I see him as an invader, because he invaded my life unasked. I don't know what he will be to you, whether he'll exist or not. Let's leave it, just like that. One must know that, uh, that Shiva has always been identified with dance and music. Dance first and then music. So everything that occurs to us, when I say everything that occurs to you, there's only one thing that occurs to you, which is sensation. Of cold, heat, pleasantness, unpleasantness, pleasure, pain, all kinds of things. If this sensation or this basis of all our experience has to become a profound possibility, you must listen to the raga, the tune set by the existence. It's not our making, it's not in our hands, it's happening. Sensation is already given to us, only thing we have to find is a rhythm. If you find the rhythm, then every experience becomes a profound experience. So when we say Shiva, we say he's a dancer, that means he found his rhythm. Because he's found his rhythm, he's become the most profound being that you can think of. So all you have to do in your life is to find that rhythm. I'm telling you because tomorrow we're going to crash. <laughs> Mm.
For ages, for thousands of years, people have seen and experienced the, the pathway that we walk as the very body of Shiva. If we have to walk on somebody's body, have to, how we will walk, that is the sensitivity with which you should walk. And keep the mantra in your breath. With every breath, Shiva Sambhav. Go. There's something tremendous out there. for me was much easier in terms of physically it was much easier after what Tilicho was because this was actually a flatter terrain and you know gradually you kept climbing up but Sadhguru was so fired up that he just kept walking he didn't even take a water break he didn't take a break to breathe there were times I thought my lungs were going to explode like, why is he not stopping? I was like almost praying, Sadhguru, please stop for a water break at least. So the, the first time we stopped at the, at the west face of Kailash. Reason I got up at 2.30 in the morning and just went out and it was a majestic sight. The sky was not very clear, it was hazy, the moon was hazy but I could see Kailash, I could see the moon and it was one of the most gorgeous sights. I think it will remain in my mind forever. a lot of um, beautiful full moons i'm a big moon watcher but this is this one was really special
his thumb on my forehead and if you ask me what happened i wouldn't know cuz i just know i just completely broke down it was it was electrifying it was like he was transferring a certain sense of power and at the same time a sense of responsibility and i just completely surrendered because i i found my guru in him it was just like a a, very, a moment i just had, i just looked at him and it happened Kailash should not become just one more feather in your cap. Like I went to Kashi, I went on an African safari, I went to Vegas by myself, and I went to Kailash with Sadhguru. This is not one more addition. If you are willing, this can become the basis of your existence. Only then you benefit. Otherwise, one more badge. bad just get heavy and sink you ஆனந்தாலே பண்ணிடலாமா அலே 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 my intellect i put so much importance in my intellect and my logic but then um you came into my life and you broken that and i discover something that's beyond intellect Time doesn't decide the quality of relationships. But we've been together nearly three weeks. If not transformation, I hope at least seeds of transformation have happened to you. It's been wonderful being with all of you. <laughs> 